On today's video, we're going to be testing Chromax paint. We have never used this before in our shop, so we're going to do a, a very detailed test of how I would go about doing any test for when you're using a new product. Now, the objective is we had some matching paint mixed up, and we, it's Chromax. It was done with a camera match, and we want to see if the match, once it's got clear and it's buffed out, and we want to see if this is going to be an exact match, really close, or if we're going to have to do some more tinkering. But this is the first time we've used the product, so we're going to do a very thorough test. Now today's video, what we're going to try to do is test the new paint that we have for the MT-09. We want to do a test part if possible, and we want to do a spray out test. Now, the original choice was to buy the, cut, the paint that we know would match very well from Colorite. The only problem is that they didn't have it available in quartz. So we had Dennis down at uh, Gavin's mix us up a quart. It looked real good. It's expensive paint and we want to do a test today and I'll explain why in the course of the video. Now on previous videos I showed why I wanted to match the paint, an exact match, and I had done that with the R1 and tried three or four different ways that, that I wasn't happy with. The color right paint did match perfectly that I did get from them. Joe Padula's job with the Ducati, the color, mat, the color right paint was a perfect match. I was real happy with the way that worked out. I was pretty disappointed that I couldn't get the paint from color right. But Dennis came through, well, once I do the test, see here's what happens. The paint in a can, you can't really tell if it's an exact match or a match to what you want. You need to put the clear on, you need to buff it out, and you need to take it out in the sun and hold them side by side. And Joe's uh, Ducati, it passed that test with flying colors. We're going to see how this works out today. Now some of the obvious do's and don'ts. What I did when I decided I was going to do the restoration on this, it was a 500 hour restoration. I mixed my own gold paint with pigment. And the wheels, the trim, and the stencils and decals all match perfectly. But I mixed the paint, so I was responsible if it didn't match. When I did the Kawasaki, I wanted to have that Camaro green, what I call Camaro green. And the good news with that is the paint was very inexpensive. And it looks pretty good even now, four or five years later. And I wanted the exact Yama yellow, and Dennis came through with flying colors on that. Let's hope, now what we did previously is I took... The R1 and the MT-09 out, they're very, very close. Well, you know what? Very, very close sometime is, uh, <laughs> well, you don't know until you take it out in the sun. And the other thing with paint matching, if two parts are side by side, you can see that they're off. But if, if you only had this part and the part at the seat and they were a little bit off, you might not see it. But I really want this to be as good as possible. So I'm going to take a, a little bit extra time and do this what I say, do it right. So parts that are due to be painted, I want to paint these pieces. I'm not sure about this tail section, not sure yet. I've done some concept sketches, and uh, I don't know, you know, that's, uh, that's in, in a wind right now. But I also want to, at some point in time, get another windshield and maybe paint the bottom of the windshield. Mm, don't know about that yet, because once I have these pieces painted blue, this is a styling issue, and it will it accent the headlights? I don't know. I also have a spare fender that's somewhere down the road when I want to evil twin the bike out. I want to have the option of just bolting on a blue fender. So I want to have choices. That's the whole thing. And that's why I wanted a quart of paint. I don't want to be in the middle of this job and then have to go find another source of paint and find out they can't get the paint either. So my objective here is I have these two little parts. And I thought these will be great test parts in every way. Because what will happen... If, if for some reason this paint is not exactly perfect and, do, and needs a little fine-tuning, I'll have that part. That's very easy to change. But if I were to paint the big pieces in the back, those two tail section pieces, you'd be wasting a lot of paint. And again, this is the paint that I'm using is really three times the price of regular paint. But I've never used it before, and I'm going to do the test today. And I'm going to share, if I learn anything along the way, that's the main thing, is to share it. Before I can start my paint test for the day, of course, if this is what happens. Every morning I have this, I have to clear the pond or else it's a problem. 
Now first thing we will have ourselves a nice cup of coffee. Here in the, we're in the middle of the Christmas season. Well, after a nice cup of coffee we're ready to go here and by the way it is the Christmas season. Let me wish your family a, a Merry Christmas from my family. Chromax is the name of the product. I've never used it before. I bought the matching mid-temp thinner and just to just so we sharing all the information now again this is pricey paint this is several times more expensive than the stuff we use normally but this is mixed with a camera mix so what Dennis did he did a a camera mix on this and of course there's a formula now I cut that formula out and I have it stored in my record books so that I know if I ever need more paint and I don't want to say this but if I ever crash the bike or what or I want to paint another bike this color well haven't saved that because what happens as soon as you go to paint something the paint drips down right on the part of it you want to read so this is my solution to that but anyway this is and again I want to make this up that the color right paint was not available but this is our backup quarterback and we're gonna see if he could win the game today so if you're new to painting the first thing you notice about buying these products it, it says for prof professional use only and no instruction at all except that it's it's 50 50 mix half and half so the first part of this is to get a small batch mixed exactly 50 50 we always start where they say and then we'll fine-tune it for our shop conditions so looking at this for the first time of course and I've looked at it already out in the Sun it looks like it's really close but because it is a pearl and a metallic among other things it's it's going to need to be very very carefully mixed we're going to mix a small batch I'm going to put it up to the I put some blue tape on there so I have the same amount of paint same amount of thinner put it in a big jar make sure it's stirred up well and get it into a very clean spray gun and then I'll be ready to do my test now rather than just pouring this in and I wouldn't get it exact I want to get an exact amount I'm trying to get it right up to the level and really this is overkill but I thought I want to get this as accurate as possible for my test to make sure I haven't jury rigged the test with too much thinner it's going to tend to melt the plastic not enough thinner I'm not going to get a bond so I really want to keep it as accurate as possible right in the beginning using the thinner that Chromax supplied so we know we're exactly right on the line I'll dump this out let drain all of it out then I'll use the same jar put the exact same amount of thinner in mix it together in this and I'll have my test batch of paint now for my shop conditions this always seems to work the best mid temp thinner I want it, I want this to be pretty accurate too now I'm sure a lot of people would not be this fussy about making the first batch but I am fussy because this is something there's there's I'm just a fussy person about getting this as good as I possibly can and because this bike for sure like all my bikes they're a keeper I'm not gonna flip it I'm gonna be looking at this pretty much for the rest of my life if I don't get it right or if, and I don't want to repaint it again that's for sure so I always try to mark with what I have in the jar and if I'm not going to use it for a long time I'll even though the lids don't leak I'll put tape around here just to seal the drawer and that way even in my case many years later I can go open the drawer and all the thinner isn't dried out now just to make sure this test is valid the first thing I want to do is run maybe a quarter of a gun of mid temp thinner through the gun okay the gun is as clean as it needs to be I'm ready to put in the test paint and then we'll go out to the garage and get those two little parts to, to prep them up and paint them and see what we got there's really only one screw holds these parts on and there's a bunch of little clips along the way much like the R1 fairing parts I guess that's how Yamaha likes to do this but really only one bolt holds it on the reason for picking these parts they're small they're plastic it'll be easy to prep only be a few minutes to get them prepped up and primed and then we'll be ready to do a little test piece now I know because I've done this a million times with similar paint you can't tell the color match until not only is the clear on but if you buff it a lot of times that color will just get a little brighter too so we're going to be really patient about this I'm not looking to rush it through I'm not so sure in the course of evil twinning this bike 
in the future I would just not leave not put those parts on but I want to have the option I want to have a lot of parts I, I always enjoy evil twinning the bikes out all right so back down to shop where it's a lot warmer let's get these parts prepped up now well, I was just thinking of something a good tip worth sharing when I did this restoration this was one of the ones there were a lot of these fairing parts you can't really see the screws they're inside they're up under the speedometer and everything and so what I did to find out where the screws are look at this skew on partzilla and you can see where any screws are or sometimes you loosen the screws can't get the part off you don't know where and you don't want to break it of course and a lot of them especially this Kawasaki to get the side fairing on there's little tabs all have to line up and then one screw holds the whole thing in well that's similar with this and I can picture that people would get frustrated trying to get that off because you can't see any screws except the first one but those little tangs they are just like the R1 the part has to go in and drop down line up do something else and then one screw holds the whole thing in that's kind of like the way Yamaha does things well I try to repeat this on any tutorial I try to explain to people now these parts even though this bikes about a year old and I haven't really, of course this is flat black, I haven't put it, I'm sure not a lot of wax if I have waxed it. But these little parts, if we have fisheye issues on them, and actually the only part you're going to see is this front edge. But I want it to be nice, I want the whole thing to be nice. So I always start with step one. Before you sand anything, simple green, clean it up. Use some hot water or steam if you have to. This looks like it's pretty clean to begin with. And the first thing I want to do is get out some 400 sandpaper and get these, just get an etch on them. Now they're plastic. They're going to have to be primed with sealer primer, not ordinary primer. Now again, I don't know. See, this is another unknown when I'm painting because I wanted to do little parts. If these go bad, I can replace this or repaint it a lot cheaper than those big side panels are five times the price so if I had to replace them but anyway it, the, the whole point is before you do any sanding simple green steam hot water even Brillo is a good way to do it now this is a, a chemical degreaser called M Sickens M600 that you really can't buy anymore not in New Jersey anyway but you can buy prep oil and any degreasing thing that they use for body shops is fine before I sand it and I know this is fanatical and I know this is a part you probably most of it you're not even going to see but you know what it's just part of well part of my DNA I guess they do a DNA test they'll find paint instead of blood anyway I do want these parts to I want the whole bike I want everything in my collection to look as good as I can make it now if you could buy this, this is just good information sickens M600 if you live in a state where you can buy it this is, this is a lot better than any of the, pr the products that it takes the place of because this is old school stuff. This is really, it's really toxic, I think. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It works. Okay, just a little warm water and a couple of drops of Dawn in it. And what we want to do is just etch the surface. I know there's paint on here. I can tell by the way the paint overspray is. That they, they put a minimum amount of paint on this, so I'm sure they, they are very aware of how much paint costs in Japan. I had a little sticker shock when I bought this paint, and, and all the paint has gone up in price. So Even a paint Scott told me he's paying a ton of money out there to get paint. So, just something we got to live with. No, I think it's fair to say, uh, prepping a part always always takes a lot longer than you think it would and then you spray the part in a few minutes but the but the prep when the prep isn't done right everything else is tell time rabbit okay we got that sanded and we're ready for our primer now critical information that well some people might not know Anytime you buy primer, if it says primer sealer, we're looking for those two words on the can, no matter whether it's Rust-Oleum, Duplicolor. And I put a lot of this information on yesterday's video. We post a video every day. And so this is going to, a light coat of this is just going to seal this and prevent any thinner that's in the upper coats from going down into this plastic and making an alligator. And if that, if it works, great. 
But if it doesn't work, well, we're in trouble. <laughs> but that usually does work. That you know, It's primer, sealer. That's the whole key to sealing up a plastic part before you paint it with modern automotive paint. So out in the garage, I want to make a handle so I can hold these parts. Because if I grab this with my hand, here's what's going to be the problem. I know you don't really see this unless you're crawling under the bike, but I'm going to see it. So I don't want to see that. I want to have it, I want to have that painted. Even the parts of this that are not really super visible, I'd like them all to be perfect. So I always have bolts and nuts that I can make handles with, and a lot of them have paint already on them. Makes it an easy choice. And just like we painted Dale's part yesterday, I made a handle on the, the headlight bucket. This makes a convenient way to hold it while you're painting it, without, without touching it or trying to balance it on your finger or whatever. Now we're finally up above freezing, for at last. Okay, so we just want to have one coat of primer on this, just to act as glue to hold our test paint on. So our parts are drying right under a, a heating vent here and Dale's bucket is up there so when it comes time to do the clear we can do all the parts with one batch. So usually with the heating vents on half hour to 45 minutes I have some other chores to do on the farm here I'll come back to this and we can spray the blue in about a half an hour. So while our paint is drying our primer Santa Claus is making us up oh, I mean Karen's making us what kind of soup? This is from our garden, right? It's roasted tomato soup. Ooh, and roasted it has tomatoes. tortellini and spinach in it. Tortellini and spinach. Oh my god. That that's a good way to wait. When you when you get impatient, you can't wait for paint to dry, make some soup. Okay, we sprayed some of the uh, thinner through the gun. The blue paint is loaded and we are ready. Now here's a tip that's worth its weight in gold, and you would think it would be self-evident, but it's not. This paint, if it sits even 10-15 minutes, if I let it sit, and I'll show this in the future, you'll see all the pearlescent and the metallic wind up at the bottom. Well, some stays in the mix, but not the right amount. So what I suggest always is, when you're going to paint something, put the paint in the gun, shake it on a regular basis. Now we know we've got it mostly mixed now. It's very critical when you have a metallic or a pearl, and in this case, it's both. And this is, I think, it's one of the most beautiful paints in motorcycling. I like it better than the other the blues that are available on other bikes. But the problem is, when you go to touch it up, it's, it's really difficult to get this right. And we won't know until the clear is buffed out, if we've got it. But we'll be, we'll be pretty close today, but it won't be that final little bit. Now the first coat is drying. I give that about 15 minutes to dry. I'm going to put on a second coat and then wait about, I think, 45 minutes to an hour and put the clear on. Now in the past, when I've used other paint, I've always let it dry overnight before the clear. But you really don't have to, but that's just been the way because I'm so old school from dealing with the years of lacquer and dope and nitrate. All the old paints, they were always better, especially in modeling, if you let them dry overnight. These modern paints not so much. Now the paint sprayed out pretty nice. Looked like it had really good coverage, but uh, that the final match, we're days away from having a final, final match. And I'm trying to spray light, thin coats, just similar to what you would do if you had, uh, well, almost an airbrush. And as opposed to putting on one big, thin, wet coat. Now, being honest, that looks like a really close match even before we put the clear on, but it's we're going to wait about 45 minutes, put the clear on. 
Now we've used this clear on Joe Padula's Ducati restoration. This worked great. He supplied the paint. We still have enough to do this job. Maybe even one more. I don't know. But it's a four to one mix of course. And uh, we're going to get a perfectly clean gun. Spray some thinner through it and then mix this up. And when it's time, I'm really looking forward to this. See how this matches. So I've been waiting here to get, this is Dale's Ducati headlight bra uh, bucket. I wanted to get this done and the two parts for myself added to one mix. That should be no problem at all. And the temperature is actually warmed up. I think it's 40 degrees out there now. It's very nice for painting. So here's a couple of really good tips when you mix and paint. This four to one mix. The hardener should be kept in the refrigerator, not in the freezer. That'll extend the life of it for quite a bit. And I found that that even three or four years later, the hardener, when it starts to go bad, what happens? It takes forever for the paint to dry. And that's, that, that can be inconvenient anyway. But here's another trick when we do the four to one mix. And I've, I've shown this before, but this is really a good trick. Never use a wooden paint stick because the wood absorbs some of the catalyst on some of the paint. I don't know about this one. I don't need to. What I always have is an arrow shaft from my days, carbon fiber arrow shaft that's clean for stirring the paint or a metal rod or something other than the, the most obvious is they give you the paint sticks in a body shop too. And well, on regular paint, that's fine. But on these four to one mixes, it can be really, uh, it can distort the amount. And I don't know how critical it is. That's information I've heard from people that run body shops and really are super knowledgeable. But, and I always listen to people that know more than I do, which probably includes uh, the whole world. But anyway, my goal is always just to pass on the mistakes I've made. And similar to uh, the things I've learned the hard way, in over 60 years of painting, been a lot of a lot of paint gone through these paint guns. Now, some people have noticed, well, they don't that everything in my shop is covered with paint dust. Well, there's a reason. I don't spend my time cleaning the tops of paint cans or cleaning this bench. I spend my time painting stuff. Now, using any paint, it would be a good idea to wear a mask if you're not shooting video, but this paint in particular, I don't even try to shoot this outdoors with the wind to my back. This is, this is stuff that you really have to protect yourself from. Anything two-part, always wear a mask. Now I like to spray to clear with the gun set so it sprays very dry and, and it means you need to put a lot of coats on to get the same coverage. But in the end, it takes a little more time, but it's worth it. Now you might have noticed how I sprayed this. It looks like I put 100 coats on. I really didn't. I sprayed it very thin, almost like an airbrush. And went over and over and over it and look at the flow out on it and that's that's about as good as it gets i think dale's going to be thrilled with that we're going to put another coat on later this has got to sit up and dry again 45 minutes a half an hour but that that's about as good as it gets dale and whether you're painting a wheel or a tank or whatever a lot of thin coats is always better than one big wet coat where it drips and drools and if you get that gun to flow out like an airbrush and just keep going back and forth, you're way ahead of the game. That's a really, really good tip. Now, of course, these parts have to stay out in the garage until they dry 24 hours. I don't bring them in the house because they, it really stinks the house up. And Karen has her friends over today. They, they might murder me. It's a problem. Now, I wanted to do the what amounts to be the second coat, not in fast forward. Because a lot of people, now, and, and when I've tried to help people learn how to paint, especially if it's in my shop environment, the biggest thing, thing people want to do is get it covered in one coat. It's like you're afraid to just keep going back and back. But if you can adjust that gun down to where it's almost like an airbrush, like a big airbrush, and put dry coats on, it get, and you see how close the gun is to the part? You get a nice flow out. And you usually, if you do it right, you don't get a lot of runs and the part will just dry up so much better. I, it's just, to me, that's the hardest part of trying to help somebody learn how to paint.
Now on the fluorescent lights, it looks like an absolutely perfect match. Looks really, really good. I have to be, have to be honest. That's pretty good. But the true test is going to be after we buff it out. So in the next couple days, we'll get the parts buffed out, reinstalled, put it out in the sun, and we'll we'll see. I think we're really, really close though. That that was a really good. Well, but you never really know. The buffing changes it just subtly too. Anyway. Hope you did enjoy the video and picked up some good information. Now, I've always been interested for my whole life, basically, since I was a, uh, a young man. And that was a long time ago, by the way. I've always been interested in the world of paint. And it started many years ago when uh, I, I guess I was 12 or 13 years old. And I helped my uh, uncle do some body work with Bondo. And he let me, he let me sand fenders of his car and we painted it and he had a little compressor and I was just thinking and I had my car painted uh, after that at a Rendy's body shop and a paint all fell off so I said ah I'm gonna learn how to do this stuff myself and when I got involved in the world of model airplanes it was it was um, a must do because in the world of model planes you can't get anybody to the rules are set so you have to do it yourself anyway but what it is, it served me well for my basically my whole life, right, right up till today that I'm able to do these jobs for myself and for people on the A-team and even complex jobs like the FCR. I'm able to lay them out and with the John Pothia's help and Thomas Luciano do some custom stenciling. I've always liked the idea that you can paint a motorcycle especially if you do custom wheels too. And you basically still have a rideable, comfortable bike that you can put the old parts back on. You can repaint it. Here's Alan Albert's frame we did, the late Alan Albert. And in the case of Luciano with the Kawasaki, he's got an evil twin Kawasaki. We did the, the one set of body work up in green. We did the other set up in blue. One of the original A-Team evil twins. And I look back at every one of these jobs. Or I basically done a job for almost everybody on the A team, at least one. I I don't know that there's anybody. Well, I'd have to think back if there's somebody I haven't done. Maybe there is. Then it doesn't really matter. But but then at the end of a job, you do this. It's a mitzvah, and and you hand it over to the uh, the proud owner. In this case, it's Luciano, and that's that smile on their face at the end of it, and it's. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that a skill that I've developed over the course of my life, over 60 years, I'm able to pass some of that information on. And the neat thing about being a painter, you don't need a lot of equipment. You need a couple of Harbor Freight guns and not you don't even need an expensive compressor. A cheap one will be fine. And you can change the whole look of a bike and you can repair things. It, it's just a wonderful skill to have. And I've always been happy to pass on through YouTube and through personal instruction, been passing on the little information I've been able to gain and learn in my lifetime. So I hope some of the information on this video is useful. I hope you'll join us. I post something up every day on my channel and I try to post useful information. So if you enjoyed the video, I hope you share it with your friends. And of course, I hope most of all that we'll see you tomorrow. And thanks again for watching.